City Tux. Hmm. What is going on, dude? What is going on, dude? Hopefully your car looks a little bit better than this one. But these people brought me this thing because they're gonna use it as a movie prop, I guess. Pretty cool. But uh, they just want kind of like a quick, easy, cheap respray on it, right? And this is something that I know a lot of you've been looking for because you don't wanna spend an arm and a leg on respraying your car. And maybe it's looking kind of like this, right? or some iteration thereof and you don't got a lot to spend and you don't want to take it to some shop and you want to try to do it yourself so i guess i'll tell you how to do it Disclaimer here, I am not going to give you the cheapest way to paint your car. This is a cheap way to paint your car, but I don't do the rattle cans. I don't do any of that. Most of the time, I'm gonna be honest, it's a waste of money, dude. Do not buy rattle cans. Don't buy any of that cheap, crappy, you know, whatever paint from Home Depot. Don't try to do all that. It looks good for like a month and it doesn't even look good in the first place, all right? Save yourself the time, don't ruin your vehicle, at least spend a little bit of money, and let's get this done right-ish, right? So, first things first, you're gonna need some kind of commercially available wax and grease remover. You can use a solvent-based one like this. There's waterborne cleaners, you can use uh, Windex, anything really, uh, Dawn dish soap, right, to get the surface nice and clean. You're gonna want a nice, 2K primer, not 1K. We're not using lacquer primer or anything like that. You want something with a catalyst that's going to harden and it's going to create a nice foundation for your paint. You don't want shrink back and all the nasty stuff that comes with using 1K primer, right? Mixing cups, right? You gotta know what you're mixing. You gotta measure it out. Uh, you can use uh, Pyrex or anything if you know how to mix going off of uh, ratios and stuff like that. A lot of people use the columns because they don't know how to do that. Um, scotch pads, right? I, I picked the rattiest one just to go with the theme of the build here, right? Uh, the red one's fine. You're gonna need an assortment of um, sanding blocks most likely. I'm not going into depth on how to do body work. If you want to know how to do body work, watch a different video, okay? This is strictly how to get it prepped out as quick as possible for paint, as cheap as possible, right? So you're gonna need some blocks with different grits for doing that. And if you want to save yourself some time, definitely invest in a dual action sander. Six inch hook and loop is the way to go with one of these guys. Little soft interface pad. This makes it easier for you to do areas that have contours and bends, stuff like that. And keeping that off of there on the flat surfaces will help kind of knock things smooth, right? You're gonna need two spray guns, one for primer, one for base coat, clear coat, or your single stage, um, and your sealer, whatever you're gonna do, right? And we'll talk about paint options later in the video when it comes time to spray this thing. But the main difference being that your primer gun has a bigger orifice for the paint to flow through because the primer is thick, all right? And then your spray gun has a smaller opening for atomizing the base and clear and stuff real nice and fine. You can either get two cheap guns, right? Harbor Freight's got them, or you can buy one gun that has two different nozzle sizes and you can swap them out. All right, so that's pretty much basically what you're gonna need tool-wise and equipment and stuff like that. Um, but I'm sure I'll fill you in as we go along with anything else that I forgot. So luckily for me, the customer actually dropped this thing off more or less already detrimmed and they're also going to handle reassembling it as well. 
which is awesome. If you want to save some money anytime you're bringing your car to a paint shop, do that because uh, they're going to like you for it. <laughs> but I'm going to take these off because they didn't have a drill to do the, the rivets on these. So I'm just going to pop those off for them. That way we have everything kind of out of the way and I think the taillights are still on it. I'll probably take this header panel off um, just because it's in pretty good shape and I don't know if I'm even going to honestly be priming this. And then yeah, one door handle. Aside from that, you're welcome to detrim your car as much as you see fit, right? If you don't want to spend any time taking stuff apart, leave it all on, but understand that that will compromise the quality of your paint job, all right? So the more stuff you take off, the better, generally speaking. Fred wants the windows down on this and we obviously have no switches. So this is the easiest way I know to remove or uh, roll down the windows. So essentially you find the plug that goes to the motor. Get it unplugged somehow, there we go. And then I grab a drill battery and you just make sure that you go the right way, because it doesn't really matter which way you go. One way goes up, the other way goes down. And now the window's down. What did I do? Well, um, I think I told you what I was doing, but there was a lot of work in between. I'm a little, oh, what's going on? There's this line. Oh, it's the LEDs. My face looks like melted in the middle. Oh. oh there we go, that's better. So there was a lot of uh, work that was done since uh, I kind of filled you guys in, right? So what happened, right? Everything is feathered out in 220 grit. If you're using a urethane primer, 220 grit is about the heaviest you want to go. 150, you can sometimes get away with, uh, but you need to make sure you got at least three good coats of primer over top of it. Otherwise, the sand scratches and stuff can swell back and you can wind up with little lines and stuff in your paint job. Um, if you've ever noticed that in someone's paint job, that's what that is, right? But, I went around, I got all these spots with the uh, nasty flaking two paint jobs or whatever was on there. I got all that stuff feathered out real nice. I made sure that there's nothing I can feel by hand anymore. So there's no abrupt edges anywhere transitioning between the metal and the paint. So that way the primer is gonna feather through and do everything real nice, right? It's gonna make it all nice and smooth. There's not gonna be ripples and bumps and stuff everywhere you might not have to primer your entire car, right? This one I had to because there was literally flaking paint like everywhere, right? So you might only need to do like your roof, your hood, the top sides of some panels, right? Or wherever you have like Bondo and stuff like that. 
Um, aside from that, you can just kind of scuff it down in like a way finer grit, but anything that's going to get primer over it, make sure it's sanded with at least 220 grit. So it's in primer. All the spots that had the sun fade and everything and the uh, chipping flaking up paint, we're gonna go ahead now and just get that all buzzed down with some 400 grit or 500 grit. And that's gonna give us a nice smooth foundation for the paint job. Uh, we're gonna go around all the edges with red scotch pad. All right. Use this to get in all your little nooks and crannies and stuff like that, edges. Um, anything that you can't really effectively sand with paper, like these little grooves and such, right? So we're gonna go ahead and just go panel by panel. I'm gonna use some black guide coat. You don't have to do that. You can just kind of go visual. Um, but this stuff right here is really good. You can also use like ground up uh, charcoal powder um, or something along those lines, right? Just kind of smear it on with a rag um, and that will give you kind of a good visual guide as to where you have sanded where you haven't if there's any weird uh, low spots anything like that again we're just going for kind of like a quick budget you know scuff and spray type deal but a little bit better than that right we want something a little bit more foundational that's why we went around and primed it we want something that is going to actually look good not rattle cans don't rattle can your car I don't know how many times I have to say that, but yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing all buzzed down, ready for some paint. Got this thing all masked up ready to shoot if you're needing pointers tips tricks anything for uh, masking your car we have another video on that uh, i think i was masking off a uh, porsche right yeah yeah and uh that video goes real in depth on you know masking technique and stuff like that some stuff that might help you guys out with your paint job coming out a little bit nicer right but as promised I said we we're going to discuss paint, right? So generally what I recommend on a budget job is going to be something along the lines of this, which is a single stage uh, 2K urethane, right? Um, always use something that has a catalyst. If it's going on the top, right, don't use uncatalyzed clear or anything. Um, if your car is metallic or pearl, um, or anything like that, you have to use a base coat, unfortunately. Uh, single stage metallic paint jobs, just just don't even try it, especially if, <laughs> if you're new to painting and uh, this is like your first paint job, uh, definitely use base coat, it's gonna be a lot easier and it's gonna save you a lot of headaches because single stage metallic is not fun to spray. So the gun of choice for today is going to be the Segola 4600. 
I have the uh, Titania air cap on there with a 1.2 XL nozzle. It's a little bit colder out today, so I decided to go with a little bit smaller nozzle because I didn't want to be flooding this thing and wind up with a bunch of runs everywhere. I think it's what, 60, maybe 60 in here. So not ideal. Oh, 64 right now. Hopefully this thing doesn't turn into one giant sag. No! 